mozzarella and cheddar are our two little owls. Young little owls, but completely fully grown. They're known as little owls because they're owls and they're little. It is as simple as that. Hello and welcome to another episode of Nature's A Hoot. You join me, Tom Morath, here in our Nature's A Hoot HQ, nestled right in the heart of the Hawk Conservancy Trust. On this episode, we'll be talking all about different species of birds of prey who out in the wild would hunt and catch insects and other invertebrates in order to survive. Now, we'll also be introducing you to a species of bird of prey who we know is an expert insect hunter out there in the wild. But first, I thought we should take a look at where our biodiversity here at the Hawk Conservancy Trust is most obvious, is most apparent, and that is in Reggie's Wildflower Meadow, right at the top of the Trust here, overlooking the valley. It's a beautiful location to see all sorts of wildflowers and grasses, of course, supporting the lower levels of the ecosystem, that food chain also supporting things like the larger birds of prey and predators. So last night, I set up a moth trap alongside Dr. Jamie McCorn, and he's up there right now having a look at what we've caught in the moth trap overnight. So here we are then in Reggie's Wildflower Meadow. And of course, over a beautiful space like this, we can expect to see all sorts of biodiversity, but it can be difficult to find. And so there's one way we can bring some of the biodiversity closer to us, and that is by setting a moth trap out overnight and then looking to see what we can find in the morning. Let's go and see Jamie, who's at the moth trap right now. Now we haven't opened this so far this morning, so whatever we see, you're seeing it here first before we've had a chance to have a look ourselves. So this is gonna really test some of our ID skills here. Morning, Jamie. Good morning, Tom. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It seemed like a good night last night. We had a bit of cloud cover, so not too much moonlight. I understand that that's... Yes, it's a good thing for moth no, trapping. For sure, and we've, we've drawn in a lot, including a few other rogue species, quite a few wasps in there as well. So we'll... Uh, Let's be careful. <laughs> yeah, be all right with them. So um, look, we've got the egg boxes all the way around egg boxes inside the trap as well. And it's important to mention that uh, the moth trap's not going to uh, injure a moth in any way. I think the word trap is sometimes a little bit misleading, isn't yeah, it? absolutely. Um, it's just going to draw them in with the light in the middle and, uh, and it's going to keep them inside until we, we open it up, which we'll do shortly. Anything you've spotted straight off I've the bat? I've got a couple, of, a couple of nice ones. There's this black rustic just on here, that. which is really stunning. I really like those dark colours. Oh, we've just <laughs> seen a very nice yellow underwing. He was doing a very nice pose for us, but he's just flown he's off. Gone. There's quite a few knocking about, so we'll come back to that. And then we've got this bad boy here. I don't think we should say that. We've got this one here. <laughs> I think it shows enthusiasm, Jamie. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, which is uh, an angle shades. It's a really stunning, sort of almost like you've got sort of veins of autumn leaf through it. I was really. going to say, you if you I mean? wanted to have a look at a moth that can do camouflage well, I mean, everybody knows about the buff tip, right? The, mm. the snapped silver birch twig. Maybe this is its uh, underappreciated yeah. cousin. For sure. It's a bit like um, walnut, I think. Is yes. that walnut? Yeah. I think so, yeah. No, really, really beautiful. It's amazing. Just there's so much variety, there. isn't there? I mean, uh, there's thousands of, of moths, of course, across the world, but even here in the UK. Yeah, we've got over two and a half thousand in the UK, known ones at least, and then you divide them into sort of two groups. So you've got around 900 what are called macro moths, so the larger ones, and then the rest are basically these micro moths, which are these tiny ones that are even smaller than these ones. That my skills are certainly uh, very much just in there. Can you see that? out of their depth of those. Yeah, and some of them are really tiny, tiny, aren't they? They're no, absolutely, almost impossible yeah. to to see without a, a microscope or something. But should we open up and see what's in here? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I'm not wanting to um, push our expectations too much. Oh, freedom, goes one. freedom. <laughs> but I'd love to see a, a hawk moth in here. And we have had hawk moths aplenty before, haven't we? We've we set have. a moth trap here. We have. Let's open this up here. We've definitely got a lot of, um, a lot of those yellow underwings going on. I'm going to try and pop you back down. You'll see they start to get a bit warmer, and as they start to get a bit warmer, you'll see them doing little vibrations, and then, like that yellow underwing that we missed, eventually will take off. So they all sort of take a bit of time to, to warm up, to get moving. 
Oh, look at this. Look, it's like a treasure trove of moths on the inside of the trap here. They're all over the place. And it, this is sort of pretty late on in the season as well, isn't it, for yeah, a so lot of these moths? Absolutely. So there'll still be lots that do fly in the colder um, temperatures. It's just harder to draw them in and draw in such a variety or so many. Now, we do this regularly, don't we? Generally, throughout the summer months, for sure, and then into the shoulder months. And it really, it helps us to get an idea of what's going on in the meadow, maybe the, the health of the local habitat here. And of course, invertebrates provide the basis of, a, of an ecosystem, the, the food that's available for some of the smaller birds we can hear in the trees around yes, us. Yes, for sure. And even some of the larger ones. You know, we've got um, several birds of prey that also will use invertebrates. I mean, even buzzards will um, go down onto the floor and take worms, for example. So there's sure. there a real variety of... of um, he doesn't want to leave He you. doesn't, does he? He's really he quite, quite cosy on You've there, which I'm quite fine with, to be honest. Yeah. There are worse friends to have. <laughs> um, there's a really yes. nice, um, I think it's a carpet. Oh, well, that's a yellow underwing, another one. You can see the really <laughs> vibrant yellow. I wonder if we can get that shot of that, that very nice, yes, I think it's a uh, red-green carpet. Wow. You might... Uh, so green, isn't it? It is. And there's a few like that, so I, I must say I might have misidentified, so just, uh, but it's carpet of some form for sure. <laughs> well, there's a lot of um, brown. A lot of brown. <laughs> a lot of brown. So, you know, people are. Oh, so, think... if you can see just quickly, oh, yeah, you can see right. he's now just, be, he's just getting warm enough that he's getting those vibes going, and then he'll probably take off in due course, although he does seem to like me, which I'm, I am thrilled about. So if we see what's in these last few egg boxes, what's got in here? <gasps> look, 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 look. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm going to see that whether is, we can I'll get him before he this one. moves away. Oh, oh of, everyone's moving. Others. Everyone's moving. But you oh, are stunning. Look at that. That is a proper, proper macro moth. Wow. That is beautiful. So we're very lucky here, aren't we? Because we've got the, the equipment here for monitoring. We've got this beautiful meadow where we're likely to find all sorts of different species. Mm. But this is something that people can get involved with. You know, if you've got a green space, if you've got a garden, if you're lucky enough, people can do this themselves, can't they? Yeah, 100%. And we actually set it up in a few different places around the grounds to see what variety we get. So even down by the Discovery Barn or uh, right next to the, the Podcast HQ, we get... Uh, quite a good variety down there as well so certainly in people's gardens you'll be able to pick up all sorts and, and like you said before that light really draws different species in so it won't necessarily be exactly what's right here in the meadow but you might get some from the woodland for example that are drawn into that light so you can definitely um really get a really nice catch wherever you are really depending on those times of the year as well yeah. obviously and if you're willing um, to part with i don't know 150 quid you can buy a moth trap like this one but equally a sheet up on your clothesline yeah. in the garden with a light trained on it can also attract those moths. We've all been there sure. and we left the bathroom light on with the window open in the summer. They're just <laughs> They're attracted to the light. So 100%. you can really have a really good look at, at what moths are in the garden just by, uh, just by putting the light there for them. For sure. So having been in Reggie's Meadow and seen some of the moth species and been immersed in all the different biodiversity that we are lucky enough to have there up in Reggie's Meadow, I've come down here to our woodland arena and to some of our brand new owl aviaries. We're behind the scenes right now of our Woodland Wonders display to meet some of the stars of the show and a species who would eat some of those moths and other invertebrates in a space just like the meadow. Come in and meet them. Now their names are mozzarella and cheddar. And I was lucky enough to work with these birds since they were tiny, tiny little chicks. We've had them here at the Trust for about a year and a half now, about 18 months. Let's go in and say hello. Oh, someone's already out. Hello, this is mozzarella. <laughs> Come on in the aviary. Well done. So this is their house. This is where they'll have the option to come in and have some nice warm and heated accommodation. And then through the door here is their main aviary. Do you want to come out, mate? Of course you do. Look at them. Mozzarella and cheddar are our two 
little owls. Young little owls, but completely fully grown. They're known as little owls because they're owls and they're little. It is as simple as that. They weigh in at about 140 grams each. So there is not a lot of bird underneath all those feathers. And because they're so small, of course, one of their favoured prey items is going to be things like insects, invertebrates, spiders. They do go after small birds from time to time and mice and voles. So those rodents that are the mainstay of the diet for things like barn owls and tawny owls are also on the menu for little owls just like this. So here's mozzarella, he's just on the glove having a few tasty treats here, but you can see this beautiful intricate feathering that he's got on the back there, this kind of cryptic coloration enabling the species to blend in perfectly with their surroundings. They might roost and nest on the edges of woodlands and in open farm buildings just like a barn owl might do. And you can really tell, can't you, how a bird like this would blend in to our great British countryside. Now, of course, we do have little owls here with us on the park at the Hawk Conservancy Trust, but we also work with the species in the wild. And if you joined us for last month's episode, we introduced you to Dr Matt Stevens, my colleague and the British Projects Manager here at the Trust. And it's his job to go and check, install and monitor nest boxes for four cavity nesting species. The Kestrels one, barn owls and tawny owls, and also the little owl, providing a home for these species where they otherwise may not find one. And I think that is very good work indeed. So if you're a little owl then, how do you catch an insect? Well, you'd do an awful lot of what mozzarella is doing right now. You'd find a perfect perch watching the undergrowth of the habitat around you and you dive down into the undergrowth when the moment is right, capturing the prey, as with all birds of prey, in his talons. Hello. Oh, they're great, aren't they? Mozzarella and cheddar. Love those two little owls and they are firm favourites among visitors here to the Trust. You can come and see them as part of our woodland flying displays here. Uh, also firm favourites amongst the staff as well. We know them as the little cheeses, mozzarella and cheddar. Now, of course, there are all sorts of species here in the UK who will go after insects. Lots of different songbirds, of course, will. But when it comes to birds of prey, the kestrel will hunt insects. We also know that species like buzzards and kites, as Jamie mentioned, will go down into the grasses or uh, over crop fields, especially when they're being toiled, and they will catch things like worms and other invertebrates in the soil and in the long grasses. So it's not just the small species who will go after invertebrates. The bigger species probably just need to eat more of them in order to survive. Now, sadly, that is all we've got time for on this month's episode of Nature's a Hoot. But join me next month when I will be uncovering and discovering more about the wonderful world of birds of prey. And if you can't wait till then, join us over on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. There is tons of bird of prey related content from the team here at the Hawk Conservancy Trust. It is brilliant. You will be hooked. If you want to support the channel, please, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. And if you've got a bird of prey related question, pop it in the comment section down below. And who knows, maybe you will get your bird of prey question answered right here on the podcast. Once again, a massive thank you to our friends over at Orange Planet Pictures for supporting us on the podcast.